just got up. Um, uh, I think I should try this editing thing today. Uh, I didn't even get out of my pajamas yet. I'm still in my robe. Anyways, I'm going to try this editing thing and see if it clears things up. Okay, that's much better. Um, okay, today's video, it's kind of overcast today. Today's video, I'm going to talk about, I guess, being the son of a celebrity. <clears throat> now, I didn't have the normal lifestyle as a son of a celebrity. I didn't have a normal lifestyle as anyone in general. I had a really unorthodox upbringing with my father. Um, but not in the way that you might think it, like in, um, like the glamorous of being the son of someone wealthy and famous. I didn't live that lifestyle. Um, nor did I live a normal lifestyle as in, uh, as in regards to most of my friends. I didn't live the lifestyle they lived either. Uh, I was the one of the few in my school who lived in a mansion. Um, I lived in Beverly Hills, but I went to Fairfax High School. I went there because my father went there when he was young. And so he thought it would be a good idea for me to go to Fairfax High School instead of um, Beverly Hills High School. I suppose he wanted me to go there because he didn't want me to associate with the other wealthy kids, I'm assuming. I don't know, or maybe he just wanted me to go to Fairfax to be as normal as I could be with normal kids. Um, so I was one of the few people who went to Fairfax High School who lived in a mansion um, and whose father was famous. Um, so some of my friends, I think, knew that of me and that's why they became my friends. Others had no idea. I didn't really talk much about my father during high school. Um, at that time, it was embarrassing for me because in junior high school, well, in junior high school, I didn't talk much about him either because I was trying to learn other things about life. I was, that was when I f was first involved or exposed to a different lifestyle than uh, what I was used to. Prior to junior high school, I went to a school called Clearview School and it was for mentally disturbed, mentally um, handicapped, um, learning disabled, um, behavioral dis uh, problems, a uh, um, variety of different um, difficulties kids had through school. Mine was learning disabled and um, immaturity problems. I didn't really act my age. I always acted like a younger version of myself, a child. Hyperactive. So Clearview didn't teach me any social skills didn't really show me a normality of life with uh, other students. We all had our difficulties, our problems, our disadvantages, and that's who I hung around with, people who were very similar to me in behavioral problems and learning disabilities. So when I went to uh, junior high school, Bancroft Junior High School, I was exposed for the first time to normal kids, kids who were properly developed, I suppose, in their mind, in their social skills, and in, in any other um, um, abilities or whatever. So I found it hard to adapt to them or to socialize with them because I was the new kid on, on the outside. Um, and that was also when I started to realize I didn't know how to read or how to do math or I was very far behind, not just in education, but in social skills. So I, fo I focused most of my time on developing those skills. I started to um, teach myself how to read. I um, picked up easy books, books that were for uh, fifth graders and sixth graders and started to read those. Uh, my favorite book, I, I forgot who wrote it, but it was called Half Magic. And I, that was the first book I ever read. And I wrote, read that in junior high school where other people were reading things like um, Weathering Heights. Well, some students were reading Weathering Heights, Great Expectations, David Copperfield. The, 
I, I found those books more like on a university level, like in a university or college or something. But kids my age, 14 or 15, were reading those books. Um, so I wasn't. So I didn't really talk about my father in Bancroft Junior High School, nor did I really want to because I didn't see the the appeal to who he was at that time. I wasn't familiar with what he was doing. I knew he worked with famous people, but that was the extent of it. I really didn't know the ins and outs of the music business or who Phil Spector was. Then, uh, then I went to high school, and at that time I did know who my father was through um, other people's conversations about him, through documentaries that I started watching about him, through um, articles that I started reading about him. So now I got, I was f really familiar with who my dad was and uh, his accomplishments, accomplishment in the music business. But when people in high school started talking about it, they started to talk about the ins and outs of music, the um, the way the wall of sound is orchestrated. And they were going into depth about things that were beyond my understanding. And so I shied away from talking about my dad because it's sort of like, um, they said, oh my God, your dad's Phil Spector. Did you know he did this with the Beatles? And what's your point of view of um, the Let It Be album from the way, um, uh, uh, from what his point or his input into Let It Be album or what was his input in how did he change the Ramones from what they used to be to his new album, End of the Century? And I, I didn't understand any a lot of that. I didn't know that what is that word? In, 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 um, the ins and outs. I'll just call it the ins and outs of the music business. Um, so I shied away from talking about my father or anything about music because people thought or would have assumed that I knew a lot more than I actually did because of my connections to the music business, though I had no connections. Um, also, people would ask how it was to, uh, if I ever saw the Beatles. I, I never saw any of the Beatles except for John Lennon, and I, as I mentioned before, it was when I didn't even know who he was. I'm having some coffee right now to wake me up a little bit. So I, I had no appreciation for the Beatles at that young age. Um, that later on developed. So um, through high school, I didn't talk about my dad. And then outside of high school, when I started looking for jobs and I was on my own, I moved out and um, had to look for jobs. It, it came up occasionally. One time I was going for a job at a um, department store, or not a department store, a uh, um, some kind of a retail store, a Cost Plus actually. Um, I went there for a job interview and the person behind the desk <clears throat> was kind of going over my application, looking over everything, saying, oh, okay, you work there, you work there, okay, that's good. And then they, and then he sees my name and says, Louis Spector, any relationship to Phil Spector? And he kind of just briefly looked up at me, but kind of went back to the paperwork, like, any relationship to Phil Spector? But more than likely, he was expecting a, no, not really, I've heard of the man, but no, no, of course, no, obviously no connection. But he was blown away when I said, um, yeah, yeah, he's actually my father. Because there are suddenly, looking from the papers, he looks right back up at me and says, are you serious? Your father's Phil Spector? And he's like, surprised, and <clears throat> started asking me questions about who my father is, or what my father has accomplished. And I'm taken back by it, and a little embarrassed because I'm afraid he's going to ask me questions that I don't know anything about. But uh, he was impressed, and next thing I know, I'm hired. I got a job. So that was way, uh, yay for me. And that happened a few times where the uh, sudden interest of my father came up do, looking over an application because of a name Spectre. And so I started to use that as uh, to my advantage. Because I had a speech impairment, um, lack of social skills, talking about my father uh, suddenly opened up an avenue I was um, not comfortable with, an avenue of communicating. So people would talk about my dad, and I would say, oh yeah, my dad's Phil Spector, he's a record producer, he, he worked with the Beatles, and he did the Let It Be album, and, and then next thing I know, I'm 
casually talking with no problems about a subject that I actually became very familiar with. Um, and I knew more about my father than most people did, as I knew him as a person, not as a producer. I knew him as a father, not as a friend. I knew him as um, someone who I grew up with, not someone who I read in the newspaper or saw in the movies. So that insight actually um, encouraged me to talk more while practicing how to talk uh, fluently with people. And of course, I still stumble with talking about stuff, and I'm still sometimes terrified that a subject will come up that I know nothing about if they start talking about uh, um, uh, politics. I don't know anything about politics. Taxes, I don't know anything about taxes. Everyday situations, I don't necessarily know a lot about everyday situations. Um, <clears throat> I was learning as I went along. I learned everything on my own uh, once I left the house. So um, it was surreal. It was different. It was it was odd for me to do that, uh, to communicate and kind of use my father in a, in a way to help me to communicate with people. But I didn't have a normal life in any sense. I lived in a mansion in Beverly Hills, but I never had the extra extravagant lifestyle. My father never bought me a car. I never bought anything that, um, the clothes I wore, he never bought me any clothes. My grandmother used to buy me clothes twice a year on my birthday and uh, Christmas, and that was the extent of it. And maybe not even, not even every year, but possibly every other year. So, I mean, as a child, I used to walk or to, I used to go to school with my shoes held together by duct tape. I had holes in my jeans. This isn't like Clearview or even younger. And my shirts were sometimes a little too tight or short for me because I hadn't had new clothes in a long time and I grew rapidly fast um, in my younger age. So dad never really invested in me in any way that I could think of. Even the food at the house was generic. It wasn't the um, um, popular brands of anything. It was, in old days, we used to have a, a generic food that had a blue stripe on it, I believe. It was a white box, white can, or white whatever container, and it had just a simple blue line that went around it that indicated um, a generic brand or something like that. Um, they don't have them today, but uh, those were popular back then for people who just didn't want, who couldn't afford the brand item. So I had generic cereal, generic soup, generic whatever. Um, if I knew how to do pictures on videos, and I don't, I could easily just show a picture right now. But I don't know how to do that, so no picture, I'm sorry. But... Uh, <clears throat> that's what we had, generic food, because Dad didn't want to buy or spend any extra money on um, elegant food, except for when uh, the items he ate. He had steak at night. He had steak with sliced tomatoes that he put on it. He had vegetables, fresh vegetables, uh, and um, baked potato. Whereas we had TV dinners, we had macaroni and cheese, we had simple, easy stuff. I did have a governess who cooked for us occasionally, but when she cooked at home with her kids, she cooked really good spicy food. But when she cooked at our house, she cooked shake and bake or um, macaroni and cheese, something simple, something easy to make. Um, and she usually overcooked the vegetables or she uh, undercooked something or she just, it just, it turned me off on a lot of food, I, I should say. Um, but anyways, I did not have the glamorous life a lot of people would think or equate me to having being raised in Beverly Hills. I was raised as if I was poor, holes in my jeans, um, old clothes, and um, my hair was long and uncapped because um, dad didn't want to pay for haircuts, so my hair was always long when I was younger. Um, <clears throat> And I was, um, and I didn't uh, go out of my house for very long, um, except for to play with my brothers outside of the yard. But most of my time was spent from the age of um, 
six years old to 13, 14, were locked up in my room. We all, my brothers and I all had our separate rooms and we were all each locked up in them. Um, the governess would unlock our doors to take us to school. We went to separate schools. Gary went to one school, Dante another, and myself, the learning disabled school. So we didn't socialize with each other at school. And then we came home, and then once we were home, we were locked up in our rooms until dinner time. Came downstairs, ate dinner, and then went back upstairs and locked in our rooms again. Um, that was my life for up till the age of 13. Um, Frida's indicating that I'm talking too much. Yeah, Frida's in the room too, as usual, in the background. <clears throat> but um, she's thinking, why would you buy a book when I'm talking too much about this book? I don't know. But anyways, <clears throat> um, so that was my life up to the age of, age of 13, went until dad finally to remove the locks and we were free to go out, but I had already been conditioned not to. So I stayed virtually in my room most of the time. Um, and that was uh, kind of how it was for me growing up. So I didn't have, like I said, the extravagant life, the wealthy lifestyle. The, the um, I was not exposed to fame and fortune. I just lived in a mansion in Beverly Hills and that's the extent of my wealth. <clears throat> and when I moved out, that was, I, I, everything else, I, Frida's now playing the violin, this small little violin, like, however you do that. What's that mean? No? Anyways. <laughs> um, so, I, every, once I moved out, I kind of had to re-educate myself, relearn things, and um, uh, overcome a lot of obstacles. And um, I didn't um, know most of the stuff that I eventually got to know. It wasn't until I met Frida <clears throat> that most of the things that I learned in life um, was taught to me. Um, um, and my social skills were because of communicating with her on a daily basis, talking back and forth. Um, and, you know, that's pretty much it. But anyways, I like doing these videos because it helps me to communicate with people and to reach out. And uh, I guess I do them also because a part of me feels like I don't want to be forgotten. I don't want to be... Um, a long ago memory. I, I kind of want to leave something behind, something to be remembered for. I want to, I guess, exist in the lives of others, I suppose. Um, I, I guess when you grow up being unnoticed, being unappreciated, being left behind, you kind of want to feel important to a degree to some people to um, I don't know it's it's kind of odd for me kind of surreal I suppose being the son of someone and not feeling like you're the son of anyone but um, anyways that's what I wanted to talk about today so I think I'll cut this now I'm just drinking my coffee it's a nice cool day overcast today so I'll probably go out and do some things um, other than that, life is what you make it. Do the be the best that you can be, and take care. Okay, I just got back from a brisk walk, um, and I just watched my video, and I just want to clarify something. I mentioned the, the normal kids. Now I want to clarify what I mean by normal. Uh, I mean in the general. Um, perspective of how other people perceive people. Normal is just generic, I suppose. Uh, as opposed to the abnormal, the um, learning disabled, the um, handicapped, the, you know, what per is perceived as different, I suppose. Um, anyways, I don't think normal is what it once was anyways. I, I consider normal people living inside the box. And the abnormal people, like myself, we tend to live outside of the box. We are a little different. We are, we are, we approach things differently. So we live outside of the box. 
not necessarily by choice, but by convenience, by habit, by just lifestyle, I suppose. So there's nothing wrong with being normal or being abnormal. Um, normal is just, you know, a simpler way to live, I suppose, a safe way to live, a safe way to be. And uh, not always, I guess, <laughs> but you know, you know what I mean. So um, anyways, I just kind of want to clear that up. So I didn't want people to be offended when I say normal as opposed to anything that's not normal is it, it, it is abnormal and different. It, it is and it's not, but it doesn't necessarily mean bad. Uh, I guess that's pretty much it. I don't know if I cleared that up or may, if I made it worse, but uh, I'm not normal and I like myself the way I am. Anyways, again, life is what you make it and make it the best as you can. Take care. Bye.